Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleChemConcepts.com. Now, today in this video, we're going to discuss on the basic concepts regarding electrolytic cells. I'm going to use all these basic concepts to help you to solve exam-based questions. Now, first of all, what are electrolytic cells? Electrolytic cells are defined as electrochemical cells whereby non-spontaneous redox reactions occur in the presence of electrical energy. And a lot of time, the electricity all right, that is used, the electrical energy that is used, uh, will decompose the compound, will break it up. And thus, it is also known as electrolysis. Now, let's take a look on the board uh, with regards to a diagram on the electrolytic cell. This is a basic diagram, all right? And uh, the three components that is required in an electrolytic cell will be uh, the battery that is stated here. So this is a battery. And then there's something over here known as electrolyte. And then you have two solid surfaces for electron transfer in terms of redox reaction. These are known as electrodes. All right, so let me label it here. These are known as electrodes. They are solid surfaces. All right. Uh, and then for electrolytic cell, the whole cell starts because of the battery or a power source all right, that gives the electrical energy. And there is a conversion of energy, let me write here, is electrical energy from the battery all right, that is converted into chemical energy when electrolysis, the breaking down of compounds occur over here in the electrolyte. All right? Now, um, let's see how we carry on to play with the cell. Um, it all started with the battery, so it's important to find out what are the charges involved. All right? Battery, the long side is positive, the shorter side is negative. And for electrode that is connected to the positive terminal, it will have the positive charge on the other side, the negative charge. All right? For physics students, you should be, very, uh, you should be aware also that electrons always uh, come out from the negative end of a battery. All right? It's released here. And whatever comes down must go up or go back all right, to the positive terminal. So this is the electron transfer in this cell. Then what, uh, what happened over here is uh, then uh, there will be ions from the electrolyte all right, that will be attracted to these two terminals that are charged positive and negative. All right. uh, what are electrolytes in the first place? Electrolytes must definitely contain uh, something called mobile ions. Let me write this down. They must contain mobile ions. So what are the common electrolyte uh, that you probably see that gives you the mobile ions? In order to close the circuit, uh, they could be your uh, molten ionic compound. So it could be molten uh, ionic compound or your uh, ionic salt, all right? In liquid state, molten means liquid. Or it could also be uh, ionic compound that dissolve in water. So it's uh, aqueous ionic compound. So they dissolve in water, whereby the ions uh, can be dissociated out from the salt, from the ionic compound. All right? It can also be your acid solution, which will give you uh, the ions also because they dissociate, as well as your alkaline or alkaline solution. These will all be suitable electrolytes, right? That you'll probably see in your exam uh, questions. Now, then what are electrodes? Uh, electrodes are solid surfaces for electron transfer. This one, there are two types. One is called the inert electrode. Inert electrode. It could also be your reactive electrode. All right? For most chemistry syllabus, all right? Um, the inert electrode example will be these two. They will be your platinum metal or your carbon uh, in the form of graphite because graphite is a conductor of electricity. All right? So these are normally the two inert electrodes that we discuss, especially if, uh, in Singapore for GCE O-level syllabus. All right? Reactive electrode will then be all other metals. All, right? all other metals we tend to put them under reactive electrodes let's uh, keep the discussion simple for this video first all right we're going to use inner electrode why because inner electrode does not get involved uh, or take part in the chemical reaction the redox reaction here they just acts as a solid uh, surface or a support 
for electrons uh, to be transferred, right? Uh, reactive electrode is a bit tricky because reactive electrode, it means that the electrode itself will also want to get uh, oxidized. You want to take part in the redox reaction, right? So I'm going to skip this for now. Let's choose, say, platinum to be here. So it's an inert electrode and it does not um, kind of affect uh, the redox reaction, okay? So electrolyte, let's, let's choose one over here also. Um, maybe you can choose uh, molten sodium chloride, okay? So we're going to choose uh, NaCl liquid or molten. So what happened is uh, NaCl molten, we have two ions called Na plus and Cl minus, all right? One is a cation, one is the N ion, all right? So it's very easy. Let's take a look. Now, Look at this side. This is a negatively charged electrode. So it will attract the positive charge ions. All right, let me write it here. It will attract the positive charge ions. So the positively charged ions will also be known as cations. Will be attracted here. Whereas on the other side, this is positively charged. You will then attract the negatively charge ions also known as the N ions okay so this is what happens so using our example called sodium chloride as electrolyte then uh, this side will be your sodium ion that is attracted this side will be your chloride ions that will be attracted all right so in this case let's see what happened um, the positive ions the cations will then take in elect Trons, all right, so the half equation over here will be like this the Na plus will take in electron and it become Na. Sodium uh, is molten when you do electrolytic cell because uh, they are group 1 metals and group 1 metal tends to have low melting and boiling point, all right, so most likely they will be a liquid over here, all right, because sodium chloride um, by right is also solid at high melting boiling point. We kind of heat it up such that it become molten and can be used as an electrolyte. So you, we, the temperature over here must be quite high. So sodium is known to be molten over here. Okay. So uh, what happened if you take a look? If you understand your redox, all right, reaction. There are two acronyms that you learn. Uh, one is called Oirik of electrons. I've discussed this in my previous video on redox reactions. You can take a look if you want. All right. So this is into of electron. Oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is gain of electron. So if you take a look at this side, sodium ion has gained electron, so is reduction is gain. It is reduction at this side, all right? Whereby over here, the Cl minus give out electron. So oxidation is loss of electron. So this side is oxidation, all right? At this electrode, oxidation occurs. And then I'm going to give you a second uh, acronym to help you. It's called uh, an ox rate cap. All right. In case your teacher did not tell you about this, it's very very useful. It's called uh, an ox rate cap. Let me write here an ox rate cap. Okay. Let me block it up and so you can see. It's called an ox rate cap. It means um, the electrode whereby oxidation occurs will be known as the anode, and at the electrode the whereby reduction occurs is known as cathode. With that in mind. This is reduction, right? So reduction rate cat. Reduction occurs at the cathode and oxidation and ox, which means it occurs at the anode, which means this electrode is known as the anode and oxidation reaction occurs over here. I forgot to write in the equation. So the equation at this side will be like this, all right? Cl minus, all right? Two of them, they become chlorine gas and two electrons, and electrons travel up towards the battery, okay? So this is what happens over here, oxidation at the anode, and this is reduction at the cathode. So in this way, you will be able to identify which side is cathode and which side is anode, right? So this is very useful, once again, an ox rig cat as well as an oil rig, right? And this is how electrolytic cells occur. And if you take a look again, you realize through the electrical energy supplied by the battery or any power source, your compound is actually being discharged or broken down 
on both sides. One is reduction, one is oxidation to form new uh, products. All right, so this is a kind of process of electrolysis, which means using electricity to break. Lysis means breaking up a compound. All right, it's a Greek word. I hope you enjoy yourself and understand what is happening here in terms of uh, electrolytic cells. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Once again, signing off, Sean Chua. Take care and see you back soon.